Redeem Racing has its new driver. The All-Stars are racing for 25 grand tonight and more dirt racing goodness for your Wednesday. Let's go. Today is Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. The much anticipated driver announcement for the Rudine 26 sprint car came yesterday afternoon with the team naming Zeb Wise the new wheelman. Wise replaces Corey Eliason, who was released last week after more than three seasons with the team, and the new pairing will begin next Tuesday night at Attica for the Brad Doty Classic with the World of Outlaws, so not tonight at Lernerville with the All-Stars. Wise ran a second car for Rudine during the Dirt Cup at Skagit recently and is currently fifth in the All-Star standings with two tens, uh, two tens, two wins, 10 top fives, and 15 top tens through 25 races this season. This is a year three of full-time competition with the All-Stars for the 19-year-old driver from Indiana, with his rookie season happening behind the wheel of the McGee 11, while 2021 and thus far in 2022 have been uh, with his own Wise Pretty team. Uh, that is a partnership also with crew chief Wayne Pretty. In a post to Twitter, Wise mentioned that he will be racing through the weekend in the 10 car, including tonight at Lernerville and Friday and Saturday at Ransomville and Stateline. From there, he'll jump in the 26 with the 10 car being parked for the time being. The loss of Eliason from the 26 and Wise shutting down the 10 means we've effectively lost an entire full-time team from the All-Star roster. It also takes both Wise and Rudine out of contention for the All-Star Championship because that series awards the title based on owner points. Rudine will miss the next three All-Star shows, and they were already way down in aid, so they're out of it, and the 10 goes away after this weekend. Uh, that is unless some sort of weird point swap situation is happening behind the scenes that I don't know about. Maybe my buddy Blake Anderson can clue me in there. So right now, we're left with Tyler Courtney, Justin Peck, Parker Price Miller, Cap Henry, Zeb Wise, who can't win the championship, Hunter Schoenberg, Bill Baylog, Kyle Reinhardt, and Chris Windham as full-time All-Star drivers. From the perspective of Kevin Rudine, I understand this move to put Wise in the 26. He's a young and up-and-coming uh, up driver. He's already won with the series and is continuing to improve, uh, especially being so young. But I'm a tad disappointed we didn't get to see a fresh name in this seat. Maybe promote a West Coast guy or someone else on the rise from around the country. Uh, and, and I don't know that this move solves all of the problems for the 2016, but we'll see going forward if some new blood and some fresh energy can uh, kind of get this group moving in the right direction again. In other driver news this morning, the uh, sort of full-time all-star Brian Grove Racing 28 team is looking for a new driver after Brandon Spithaller tweeted that he's left the team. Spithaller will be in his own 22 car tonight at Lernerville. The 28 was originally going full-time this year with Tim Schaefer behind the wheel, but that didn't last very long. And then Spithaller jumped in the car in May, but is already out again. We'll see if that car is at Lernerville tonight with another driver. And looking ahead to tonight, the All-Star teams will race for 25000 to win at Lernerville for the Don Mart Memorial Silver Cup. After being a War of Outlaws sanctioned event for a pretty long time, this race is now All-Star sanctioned because of issues between Lernerville and World Racing Group. You might remember, Lernerville went ahead and flipped the Firecracker 100 from War of Outlaws to Lucas sanctioned for 2022, and the loss of the Outlaw sanction for the Silver Cup was basically collateral damage here. It's a pretty wild turn if you think about it because Lernerville used to be owned by World Racing Group and now just a few short years later, the new ownership group has completely turned on that relationship. Anyways, back to the All-Stars. The two most recent trips to the Pennsylvania track have been won by Hunter Schoenberg, that was back on April 29th, and Aaron Reitzel back in 2019. The DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula likes Tyler Courtney tonight, but I'm going to go Justin Peck here. Peck led laps at Lernerville back in April after starting on the pole, and that team has 15 top five finishes in their last 20 all-star features. That feels like it's pretty damn good. Peck only trails Sunshine by 38 points currently, and he's got three chances this week to try and close that gap down. There are some rain chances in the area today, so pay attention to that if you are headed out to the racetrack. You can also watch this one live over on Flow Racing. Also tonight, the Lucas Light Models kick off a four-race week with a stop at Davenport Speedway in Iowa. This will be the first ever trip for Lucas to the quarter-mile facility. As we talked about yesterday, Brandon Shepard leads Tim McCready by 55 points in the standings with, uh, with Ricky Thornton Jr., Tyler Erb, and Earl Pearson Jr. completing the top five. After tonight, Lucas heads to Deer Creek in Minnesota with Saturday's show paying $50,000 to the winner. I guess we'll see pretty good car counts over the next few days with so much cash available. Tonight, the analytics prediction formula likes Brandon Shepard, and I'll agree here. He was really good last weekend, picking up the win at Muskegon County on Sunday, and he's won four of the last seven stops at Davenport with the Outlaws. 
In those seven races, his average finish was an incredible 2.43. Tonight's action will be live uh, on both Flow Racing and Mav TV Plus as we kind of still await for that deal to finish out. Speaking of dirt lay models, I get asked pretty regularly about the chassis situation in dirt lay model racing. Who's the best? What do the stats look like? Why is one doing better than another? Or kind of etc. These are all really tough questions because things are so cyclical and it really depends on the team and the driver. Right now, we've got Rockets leading both national tour point standings between Shepard and Dennis Herb Jr. McCready and RTJ are both Longhorn guys. On the outlaw side, Max Blair and Tanner English both drive Rockets. Devin Moran has won plenty this season in a Longhorn. Jonathan Davenport grabbed the million at Eldora in a Longhorn. Chris Madden has won a whole bunch of money this year in a Rocket. Bobby Pierce has won with the Outlaws and Summer Nationals in a Pierce Platinum. And we've got a guy like Chris Ferguson who won a Crown Jewel this season in a Bloomquist. I think you could probably make arguments for a lot of these chassis builders being really good on any given day. But I think it really comes down to what drivers and teams are really comfortable with. And we've even seen plenty of times like Tyler Erb this year where guys go back and forth between chassis manufacturers. There's definitely not a black and white answer when it comes to these questions around dirt late model chassis. And so it's really hard for me to sit here and say, oh, Rocket's better. Oh, Longhorn's better. Kind of just depends on which way the wind blows, it feels like. A couple of other news items for you today. When the USAC Midgets hit the dirt track at IMS later this summer for the BC39, another NASCAR driver will jump in a midget for that event. Sheldon Creed, who currently drives in the Xfinity Series for Richard Childress Racing, will make his series debut with Abacus Racing. That will be as a teammate to Maria Kofer. Creed is a regular on Wednesday nights at Millbridge in a micro, so this won't be a huge jump for the driver, who also has a Truck Series Championship and a lot of experience racing off-road. When I say Truck Series Championship, look behind me. Uh, the BC39 takes place August 3rd and 4th. Also, we've got a couple of Summer Nationals schedule changes. The series announced a few days ago that tonight's show at Fayette County was canceled because of forecasted extreme heat. So no racing tonight for the Summer Nationals. Also, the July 15th race at I-96 has been sacked. The series officials looking to replace that date with another track. Uh, the futures of both I-96 and Fayette County seem to be in doubt right now, so we'll kind of have to pay attention to uh, what things look like going forward for those tracks. In other dirt racing audio this week, Wing Nation has Todd Quiring, Swap Talk has uh, Tim McCready, Loud Pedal has Jade Avedigian, Passing Points has Zach Blurton, The Dirt from Knoxville has Caleb Johnson, Dirt Tracks and Rib Racks has Troy Morris, and there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, The XR Super Series Podcast, and All Gas No Breaks. To see the full list of shows and episodes, head over to dirttracker.com slash podcasts. Uh, if you need a dirt racing fix today, you've got plenty of options across the streaming services. Flow Racing has the All-Stars from Lernerville, Lucas at Davenport, and Flow 24-7. And like I mentioned, Mav TV Plus also has the Lucas Late Models from Davenport. And there's also racing from Hancock County Independence and the Rush Sprint Cars from Lernerville over on Speedsport. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Wednesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Remember, we're trying to get to 10,000 YouTube subscribers by year's end. So if you are watching this show or listening to the show and you do not subscribe to the YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button and help us get to that goal. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.